Hi, Royals. <clears throat> Let's do some uh, illustrations from Lesson 7.6. Lines in three space. When we don't uh, have the guarantee of having a y-intercept uh, and slope isn't enough to, to um, define the direction of a line, then we, we won't have a Cartesian equation anymore. The same idea occurs. And if you're, if you're having a hard time visualizing what's happening here by sketching in 3D, you really can sketch in 2D and just imagine that you've found a plane that contains your line. So I don't know, like here's a, here's a line in R3, right? Um, I'm going to pretend that maybe it doesn't have an x-intercept or a y-intercept or a z-intercept. In fact, maybe it's passing through the point, I don't know, 2, 3, 4 right here. So it's in front of the z-axis. Well, to define this line, all I need is a position vector to some point on that line. Let's call it p0 with coordinates x0, y0, z0. That would give me the position vector with components x0, y0, z0. And then I need a direction vector that is parallel to the line. There's a direction vector. Let's say that it has components a, comma, b, comma, c. To me, it kind of looks like this line is maybe going back a bit and right a bit and up a bit, but I don't know. Um, onto this position vector, I will add an infinite number of scalar multiples of that direction vector. So that gets me a vector equation that a position vector to every single point on this line is a position vector to some point on this line, plus an infinite number of scalar multiples of the direction vector. My comment about um, just imagining that you're sketching an R2 kind of translates into this equation. This is exactly the equation for a line in R2. Um, so it, it doesn't really tell me in what space I'm in. I suppose I could be a four-dimensional line here. When I become more specific by putting in the actual number of components, it should be clear in which space I am in, what size space or whatever. A, B, C. OK, T is all real numbers. Next thing that I want to discuss, and it didn't come up on the lesson, was um, the idea of angles between lines. And in R2, we had the idea of, well, you find the intersection, and you can measure either that angle or that angle. In R3, and I'm going to try to illustrate this with my pens floating in space here. Uh, I'm not sure how else I can show it, maybe by rotating my space. These lines are not intersecting. Okay, They are skew lines. And we'll find the intersections of lines in 2-space and 3-space. But I can still find the angle between these lines. Now, it's, it's not going to be, in your perspective, it's not going to be that angle. That kind of looks like an obtuse angle. It's not going to be that angle of 90 degrees. It's going to be, what, you, what you're going to need to do is you put yourself in a plane that contains both lines, or sorry, both um, direction vectors for the lines. And you measure that angle in between them, that acute angle right there. Sorry, where my fingers wagging there. Um, so the what, what I just want to mention here and make sure that you're comfortable with is you still just find the angle between two lines direction vectors or their supplement. And that will be the angle between lines. You don't, you don't need things to cross to be able to measure the angle in between them. Okay. So just um, use the dot product on their direction vectors. And keep in mind, you will either want the angle between the direction vectors, but if they're pointing in I suppose opposite type directions, you're going to want the supplement because we're, we're looking for that acute angle if possible. If you're dot zero, then you, you don't have an acute angle. You've got a 90 degree angle. Okay. Last thing I want to do is maybe just provide some illustrations for the questions or some of the questions on example number three, just to help you get the direction vectors. I think the position vectors should have been uh, straightforward. Um, example 3a, you were asked to find the equation of a line something, something, something parallel to the y-axis. So let's just do a little sketch here. Positive x, positive y, positive z. 
Okay. Um, I don't know. Let's pretend I'm going through the point. I, I don't have the point in front of me. Um, one, two, three, and I am parallel to the y-axis. I'll just use a direction vector in the y-axis as a direction vector for the line. How about j-hat? I'm going to use a direction vector for the line is j-hat, also known as 0, 1, 0. Now, perpendicular to the y-axis um, is a little bit more confusing because there's an infinite number of possible directions there. And you'll see that come up in a future question. Notice that if I am parallel to the y-axis, that means that I am also perpendicular to the xz plane. And I don't think you need to memorize this, that perpendicular to the xz plane means parallel to the y-axis. Just draw a sketch to visualize it. Um, question B asked us to find the equation of a line. So we needed a direction vector for a line that was perpendicular to the yz plane. I wonder if I can reuse this diagram here. So here's my yz plane. For me, it actually looks like the surface of my page. Perpendicular to the yz plane. There it is being perpendicular. Sounds like I could use the x-axis or the opposite of the, or sorry, the positive x-axis or the opposite of the x-axis. So how about um, i-hat or maybe the opposite of i-hat? I'm going to use d is i-hat or 1, comma 0, comma 0. Now, this is an example of a vector that is perpendicular to the y-axis, but um, k-hat would also be perpendicular to the y-axis. Uh, one comma one, co or sorry, one comma zero comma one would also be perpendicular to the y-axis. So you'll see the trouble is that uh, if, if you're asked for, say, parallel to a plane or perpendicular to an axis, you might have to come up with a family, or maybe you just need to suggest one possible equation. Um, read the directions carefully, whether you ask are asked for all equations or a family of equations or a possible equation. Um, I think that happens in example C when you are looking for a direction vector for a line that is parallel to the yz plane. Um, let's, is it yz? Yeah. Perpendicular, parallel to the yz plane. Got it. Let's just get a new diagram because that one's getting a little bit crowded. x, y, z. Here is the yz plane right here. Oh, there's a portion of it. I can't draw it all. I'll run out of paper and ink. Parallel to the yz plane doesn't mean that it's in the yz plane, but its direction vector could be in the yz plane. So um, some easy examples here would include j hat and k hat. Both j hat and k hat are parallel to the yz plane. But I'm pretty sure question C said, but not parallel to the y-axis or the z-axis. Um, so I would suggest if, if you have the choice, why don't you use I hat plus, or sorry, j hat plus k hat. I would argue that the vector 0, 1, 1 may be the simplest vector that is parallel to the yz plane while not being parallel to the y axis or the z axis. Okay. Just a little bit of sketching, and you don't, you don't need to be a great artist. You do need to be able to visualize this as in three dimensions on a two dimensional surface, and that's difficult for some people. It's just the way that their brain is wired pretty much unrelated to any other measure of intelligence, but just some people have a hard time with spatial reasoning. Um, yeah, so do your best with it. Um, see if you can find some algebraic patterns if you're having a hard time uh, sketching. I think in the lesson I suggested using a vector that was in the format 0, comma something, comma something, as long as neither b nor c are equal to 0. And that'll guarantee that I'm not parallel to the y-axis uh, or the z-axis, and make sure that I'm not the 0 vector. You could argue that the 0 vector is parallel and perpendicular to everything else. Um, you kind of say it's of arbitrary direction. So make sure you choose non-zero vectors for direction vectors. Okay.